What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel, Discovering Nicole. My name is Nicole Pludre and I am a person in long-term recovery. My sobriety date is July 13th of 2015. I have been getting a lot of requests. So far I've seen like three or four people comment that they really want me to talk about meth psychosis again. So this in this video I will be discussing methamphetamine psychosis, methamphetamine abuse, methamphetamine use, so trigger warning to those of you guys, you know, that need that trigger warning. Um, if you're easily triggered by talks of drug use, drug addiction, psychosis, please X out this video now and, you know, come back and watch a different one. So first and foremost, let me share with you guys how I got addicted to methamphetamine. I started using stimulants at a pretty young age, probably about 16 years old. Um, uh, because I struggled with my weight and I had went to an out of town band camp for about two weeks when I was about 16 years old. While I was at band camp, I started to starve myself. I would only eat a diet, drink a diet Coke, one diet Coke and one Snickers bar every single day. And the rest of the day I would just drink water. And I lost like 20 or 30 pounds whenever I came back from that two week trip that I was gone at. When I came home, I got so much positive reinforcement and positive attention for the amount of weight that I lost. And so many people could tell that I looked different, that it really fed that part of my brain that was like, oh, wow, you need to keep doing this. So I talked to my mom and got her to take me to the doctor and I begged my doctor to prescribe me medication to help me lose like 10 more pounds. I think I maybe weighed like a little over 150 at the time and I wanted to be 135, which was like my goal weight for the size and height that I was. And so that was my goal and that's how I got my doctor to prescribe me the medication. Well, I only had that medication for like a month and I ran out and he wouldn't prescribe it again. So that's when I went and started seeking out stimulant medication elsewhere. And at the time you could buy ephedra, ephedrine across the counter, pills that had ephedrine in them. And so that's when I started buying mini thins, stackers, um, Herbalife, um, hydroxy cut, that kind of thing. Well, going into my junior year was the first time that I really started drinking alcohol and partying. And I tried methamphetamine for the first time with my friend Marcus. He was smoking it out of a bowl. I hit the bowl and I immediately fell in love. When I hit that bowl, I could feel my hair growing out of my head. I could feel the hair growing out of my arms. My mind immediately felt heightened and aware and clear. And so I wanted that feeling. I wanted that feeling every single day. So that's when I started seeking out methamphetamine on my own and buying it. And by the time I was 18 years old, I was fully addicted to methamphetamine. But at this time I was only smoking it, snorting it and doing hot rails. A lot of you guys always ask me what a hot rail is. A hot rail is when you take a glass pipe with two open ends, you heat one side of it, put the cool end in your nose and then snort the line and it will make it turn into vapor and you'll blow out smoke. That was my favorite preferred way of use. But while I was smoking, snorting and hot railing it, I never experienced psychosis. It wasn't until I shot methamphetamine for the first time that I started to experience methamphetamine psychosis. My psychosis, it crept up on me. It was little things like seeing a shadow that wasn't like a shadow person or the outline of a person, but they weren't really there. Seeing something on the TV that wasn't really there. The longer I stayed up, the more intense my psychosis got. And it quickly started turning into me talking to people that were not really there me interacting with my hallucinations, auditory and visual. This went on for years. Anytime I would stay up for a past two and a half to three days, I would start to go into psychosis. 
I have hallucinated that my husband had a woman in our bed while I was laying in the bed with him. I have hallucinated that my boss was walking down the street with me on my way to my job and I was walking at 2 a.m. I have hallucinated that I was smoking crack and blowing the smoke to my coworkers underneath a door. I have hallucinated that the cops were outside of my door for 10 hours straight. I have hallucinated that there were helicopters above and they were coming to bust in my door. I have hallucinated that my boyfriend, who at the time had one leg, was rolling around in the trash can, popping in and out of the trash can. The hallucinations I can tell you are endless. I have hallucinated that Scythe from Duck Dynasty was coming out of a vent in the fucking ceiling. I have literally talked to my hallucinations. I have interacted with my hallucinations. They were wild. When I got sober from drugs and alcohol, it took me a long time to realize that my hallucinations were not real. Because at the time I thought, oh my God, like did that really happen? And I was questioning my reality. But for me, once I got sober, I started to heal and those hallucinations went away. There are some people that are not as fortunate as me and their hallucinations don't leave or they exasperate an underlying mental health issue like schizophrenia that continues on after they get sober. And this is not my experience. So a lot of you guys ask me about people who are still seeing their hallucinations and they're sober. And that, that's not my experience. Once I got sober, my hallucinations went away. If you are somebody who is still, still experiencing auditory and visual hallucinations after you have got, gotten sober from drugs and alcohol, I want to encourage you to please go to the doctor and get checked out because it could be something very serious that could be addressed with medication and treatment and therapy. Um, if you're someone who loves somebody who's struggling with addiction and has psychosis, please be careful and protect yourself. When I was in psychosis, I could do anything. I really thought that what I was seeing was there and you cannot convince that person otherwise. So the best thing you can do is protect yourself and your loved ones because the person that's going through these, the psychosis, they can become violent or they could be really hurt and wanting to hurt others or they could be as happy as a clam and really, really, um, um, you know, not hurt anybody. They could be a harmless, but you never know. It's something that you can't, you don't know. It's just like, you have to protect yourself. And so my best advice to anybody that's struggling with a loved one that is in meth psychosis is to have that person Baker acted or committed because they are a danger to themselves or others and let them get the help that they need because that way they can get treatment and they can get mental health problems addressed if that is what they need to do. I'm here to support you guys and I understand the struggle to get sober. And I want you to know that if you're somebody who's still struggling with addiction and you haven't been able to get sober, that's okay and you're welcome here. What I believe in doing is meeting people where they're at. Okay, so I'm not gonna shame you for using drugs. I'm not gonna tell you you need to go to a meeting or call your sponsor or read the big book. I'm going to love you and support you and help you to make better decisions. But if you're not ready to make those decisions, I will love you where you're at. I want each and every one of you guys to know that I couldn't get sober until I was ready to get sober and change my life. And so no, I just want you to know that you have to do it in your time. And I will be here to support you when that time is ready. But yeah, that's my video on meth psychosis and my experience. Um, I'm going to try and reach out to somebody that still has hallucinations in sobriety um, and see if I can get somebody to come on the channel that I can interview that we can talk to. And maybe even somebody who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia after addiction. So 
yeah, don't forget to like this video, comment, leave me a comment. Let's get a discussion started. Subscribe and share the video, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.